All right. Well, it looks like we're about a couple minutes after the hour, uh, so we'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'll start with the agenda for today. Um, so we're going to start off by a few introductions. Uh, I'll introduce the leadership team here at the TUG, and we'll get into our Vetevis uh, kind of edition of the event, followed by our guest speakers, Luke and Yamil. Uh, so we'll hear from them. And then we, we have a job board. This is kind of the first time we've done it at this event, uh, but we'll have a job board where we've posted together a lot of really unique uh, jobs that are out there. And then we're gonna announce some future events as well. So stay tuned for that because we'd really like the group to attend those as well. Um, then we'll end with some closing remarks and an open discussion. All right, so to kick us off, Tim, do you wanna introduce yourself? Uh, sure, I'm uh, Tim. I'm the one of the co-leads and um, I, I founded this about a few, uh, uh, a few years ago. Um, and I served in the Air Force. I'm currently with the FAA with the, with the uh, Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Um, as you can, I like space, as you can tell by my, my, my background. And uh, I'm a strategic planner and, and do performance measures. So uh, I specialize in, in um, figuring out the best performance measures that you need to, to make sure that you're, you're on the right path. So if you want any, want any help with that, let me know, reach out. Um, obviously I, I use um, Tableau and, and things like that too, to, to visualize some of the, the metrics, but that's me. Perfect, thanks. Uh, I'm Ethan, I'm an Army veteran, currently the Senior Manager of Analytics Engineering at Playfair Data. Um, I have a breadth of skills, uh, anywhere from advanced tablo Tableau data visualization uh, development to statistical analysis using R or Python, um, data engineering using SQL um, or tools like Altrix. Uh, so a lot of skills under my belt. Uh, but I also love being a mentor and helping solve problems. So if anyone out there has any questions or needs help solving a specific issue, uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to jump in and help. Um, and just so you know, I do have all of our contact information as well at the end of this presentation. Um, and then if you go to our user group page, our contact information will be listed there as well. Uh, Lou, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. For... Uh... I'm the token uh, minority to, to make sure that we're uh, inclusive and equitable in terms of this team. So former Marine, um, I'm excited. Look forward, please link linked up if uh, we have not connected. Uh, so other than that, you guys could read my profile. I don't have all the technical skills like uh, Ethan and Tim, but you know we, we can work through all that as well. So thanks for joining today. Perfect. Thanks, Lou. Uh, Abe, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Uh, my name's Abe. I am a former Marine myself. Anywhere we go, we always try to kind of take over. Um, so I'm in my last semester of my MBA here at Nova Southeastern University. Um, so I'll, I'll be done in December, graduate next uh, June, walk across stage. Uh, I actually work at the school as well as a financial analyst, but I haven't done any financial analyst work yet. I've mostly been writing SQL queries uh, and trying to set up uh, trying to set up direct queries uh, in, in Power BI. Uh, only really been self-teaching myself analytics for almost a year, but uh, my main skills are Tableau, Power BI, Excel, SQL, and then I'm also you know trying to learn R at the same time. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. Perfect, thanks, Abe. And I'll introduce Jade. She got wrapped up in a few meetings this morning, uh, just like many of us. So, uh, but she's our newest co-lead in the user group. Um, she has a vast skill set as well. She has over six certifications in Salesforce, um, and she actually volunteers uh, with a group called Mer Meriv. I'm going to butcher this, but it's Merivius. Uh, they are an organization that helps veterans and their spouses, kind of. Um, find career paths and stuff as they transition to civilian life. So as you can see, the, the group, we really have a, vi like a wide range of skill sets and stuff, but we are here to help the community. So if there's any needs out there, even if it's a colleague or someone you may know, someone that's transitioning even into the military or into civilian life, um, definitely have them reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions and kind of help them along their path. So let's see. So we'll kick off the Vet to Viz story. 
um, Abe will kick us off and he'll kind of share his story. And in this segment of the, the events, what we like to do is just kind of share our own story of how we went from being a veteran um, to getting into data visualization using data analytics and tools like Tableau. Um, so Abe, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I got out of the Marine Corps last uh, last August, August 9th, 2020. Um, did 10 years, started in supply, and then I finished up in recruiting uh, at Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, so how I kind of got into analytics was um, I, I got out, I knew I wanted to do two things. Well, I started planning way before, about like a year and a half in advance. I knew I wanted to go to school and work full time. Um, so I knew I, I liked finance. I wanted to study finance. Uh, Nova is a good school in my area. So I decided to go there. I originally wanted to be a financial advisor, but then when I figured out that you had to make cold calls and do sales, I was just like, yeah, that's not for me. I don't want to do that all over again. Um, so then in my first semester, I took a, an ISM class and I found, um, and then I started learning about business intelligence and analytics. And then I was like, oh, this is, sounds cool. Uh, and then with ACP, uh, American Corporate Partners, they did a, uh, they did like a presentation with Morgan Stanley and the chief data officer, he's a veteran, he's an army veteran. Um, he, he was talking about the different careers at Morgan Stanley. And then I saw wealth data analytics and I was like, so I can do analytics and something in finance or wealth management, like sign me up. Uh, so from there, I just started like looking at different courses, like reaching out to, you know, just networking to different people, um, finding different people that are in finance or in analytics, trying to learn from them and grow as much as I can. Uh, started learning Python, but then I quickly learned like that was not what I wanted to do. It, it, it went way over my head. So then I reevaluated and I was like, all right, what fields in analytics do I like best? So for me, as of now, like, you know, business analyst, data analyst, something that I could do both be like client facing and do some analytical work. That's like more what I want to tailor my career. I don't want to be like a like a crazy data scientist or, or anything like that. Um, and then, and like I said, I'm in my last semester MBA. Um, I might do a um, certificate in business intelligence analytics at my school, just to use a couple more months of GI Bill. Um, but I'll see, I'll see how I feel uh, in a couple months if I really want to do that. But besides that, um, different areas I've been self-teaching. I uh, use Data Camp for a little bit, just mostly YouTube, Google, um, SQL. I've been using Danny Moss course, Data with Danny. Uh, I'm actually a, a SQL mentor there as well. I feel like I barely anything, um, I feel like I barely know anything about SQL, but he asked me to be a mentor. Um, so that's pretty good as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much just my quick data story in a nutshell. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Abe. Uh, that's great stuff. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to share their story? And you don't have to be a veteran to share either. This could be, you know, you went from being someone working in Excel to doing Tableau. Uh, we would love to hear everyone's story. They're all unique. I mean, I can, I can share my story. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a veteran, but I feel uh, it's amazing to be around so many amazing veterans here. I mean, it's uh, so my name is Yamil Medina. I, you know, been using Tableau probably for eight years now. I used to be in an accounting and finance for a long time. I worked for companies like SunTrust, Morgan Stanley too, which is incredible that you, you mentioned Morgan Stanley. Uh, I, I used to be a stockbroker. So when, when I started uh, in 1993, uh, financial advisors were called stockbrokers. And, you know, from there, uh, you know, I move into accounting and finance, uh, work for different banks, but then I moved, I live here in Orlando and I started working for Universal Studios and someone uh, had a, a Tableau license and I was working with survey data because if you can imagine in, in, in theme parks where they do a lot of surveys and it was impossible to work with surveys, to be honest with you, and to do visualization with surveys is actually pretty hard. So we had one license, the whole company for Tableau, and we are part of Comcast, but Universal Studios here in Orlando and NBC, they were just starting out. So they gave me the, the, the license for Tableau. I didn't know anything about Tableau. And this was when Tableau was Tableau probably seven or something like that, <laughs> version seven. So um, I, I got crazy. I mean, I, I couldn't stop working with Tableau. I mean, I was like, this is the future. You know, I was working with Cognizant and Excel for a long, long time. And when I found this, I was like, this is what I want to do. And I told my boss and I said, you know, this is what I want to do for forever. I mean, this is what I want to do. And we started creating 
dash were super fast. I mean, for uh, visualization related to survey data. And then I met uh, Steve Wexler uh, too, and we, I talked to him on the phone when he was not that famous. And and then um, I, I I loved it, the community. You know, I started going to the to the conferences. I am one of the leaders of the Tableau user group here in Orlando, one of the oldest leaders, eight years. And from there, I'm, I'm going to talk to you guys about that. I have a show now uh, for data visualization. I mean, you name it. I became a Tableau ambassador too this year. So uh, you can do a lot with Tableau. I mean, honestly, data visualization, like Abe said, it's, it's great. I mean, you, you can go whenever, whatever you want. And it's, it's, it's worth doing this. I mean, it's worth, I mean, that's why I'm so excited. And thank you for inviting me. Yeah. That's great. It's good to have you. Honestly, this yeah. is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Is We have time for probably one more. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to share their story? Uh, I'll jump in. Uh, my name is Aaron Gustafson, and uh, I'm a nine-year Navy submarine veteran. I see the presenter is also a submariner, so good to see multiple of us in here. Um, let's see, so I work for the Department of Labor in an agency called the Veterans Employment and Training Service. So we have a, a few different programs out there. Uh, we are the ones that run the transition assistance program. So probably most or all of us have been through that. Uh, it obviously has gone through a lot of improvements since I transitioned in 2007. And uh, I've been working with this agency for eight years total. Um, about seven of that, I was a state director out in Alaska. And just recently, about a year, year and a half, I transitioned to the national office in DC and I now work as the senior performance analyst. So very similar to Tim, uh, do performance measures across all our different programs, try to you know streamline things, make them more efficient. Um, and I'm kind of recently new to Tableau, uh, maybe about two years kind of uh, self-taught. I was actually going through, I think Tableau Public is when I stumbled upon this user group uh, just a couple months ago. And so this is the first meeting I've made. Um, but just interested to, to see some of the others in here and, and connect. So thank you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thanks for sharing, Aaron. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it is a small community. I mean, you mail mentioned, you know, you ran into Steve Wexler and started talking to him before he was even like a thing. Um, you know, running into another submariner here at our little event. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's good to see that, that kind of stuff. Aaron, Aaron, I got a question. Um, I also have to ask. Um, uh, those that served on subs. Were you ever based in Groton, Connecticut? Well, our submarine school is there, so almost everybody goes through there. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I was there for about a year and yeah. then stationed in Kings Bay, Georgia. I was yeah. on a ballistic missile submarine and then cool. uh, did three years on shore duty in Pearl Harbor. I'm, uh, I'm from Groton. That's why I, that's okay. why I ask. Um, <laughs> oh. so, some, people, some people frown when they say, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a pretty cool place. And oh. um, uh yeah and my my father worked at electric boat my mother worked at electric boat um fixing subs and doing contracting and things like that yep that makes sense i don't think i've really ever met someone that said that they were originally from groton it was just mostly people you know like like me and others going through for yeah. school so yeah no people are actually from there that's right <laughs> yep good times though yeah it's a nice area everyone that's all I'm well say. talking about submariners let me go ahead and introduce luke um, so as we all know, uh, Luke is a lead data analyst at uh, engineer, excuse me, at BASF, and he's a YouTuber with almost 90,000 plus subscribers. Um, so that's quite a following. Luke's a former Navy uh, submariner. He transitioned out of the military into the data industry. Um, and after entering the industry, he began making content using YouTube, uh, which helped him push his skills and career to the next level. So Luke, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Let me uh, jump in and share my screen. And boom. And I don't know, can I see the chat during this at all? Um, oh, they have a chat window opened up. Okay, we're good. Um, so during this, um, a lot of thoughts, a lot of topics on my mind. So if ever anything's confusing or you have any questions, just throw a, uh, a chat in there. And if I don't notice it, somebody else could just call it out to me to let me know that there's a chat. 
Um, anyway, thanks uh, to this group here for inviting me to come and speak with uh, all of you today. This has been like a, it's an honor for me to get to go and sort of share my story and share my insights with uh, how I think we, what's the best way to transition into this field. And maybe if you're, especially if you're already in this field, what are some key takeaways that I want to share uh, that I think you could potentially use in your, um, in your own job as well. I just don't think we have enough sharing. And so I love, I love groups like this where we can get together, especially we have a commonality of veterans um, and, and share this knowledge because we're only going to get better if we can actually share um, our learnings and what we've made our mistakes from. And I made uh, plenty of mistakes. I was the youngest of three brothers and they were always getting into trouble. And so like as the youngest, I just watched them and what they were getting in trouble for. And I just didn't do what they were doing and I didn't get in trouble and I didn't get beat. And then I became the favorite child. Uh, and so it just, it worked out for me because of that. Uh, so I'm a really strong believer in just uh, learning from others and, uh, and then also sharing that uh, as I, I'll get into with uh, the YouTube. Okay, um, so yeah, I'll title this, How Not to Transition in, in, into Data Analytics. I don't wanna make this all about me, but I, I just wanna sort of share my journey of, of how, where I went from uh, in the military to becoming a data analyst. And uh, I'll cover that uh, briefly, but mainly what as along the way, as I'm, as I'm sharing this journey, I'm gonna show a, a quick little overview of my transition, but I'm gonna basically go into for the presentation, I wanna share some of the learnings that I got along the way that I hope you can take and actually apply it to your role or maybe your transition into this field. Um, yeah, so um, background on me, um, I was uh, under, went to undergrad at uh, Ole Miss, got it in mechanical engineering, was in the ROTC there. And from there, I got commissioned into the Navy and immediately sent over to South Carolina, where I went through the nuclear uh, propulsion program training because all of our I volunteered for the submarine force and all of our submarines are nuclear powered. And so I went through a nuclear training pipeline of like a year. And then after that, um, I was stationed aboard a submarine out in Washington on the USS Jimmy Carter uh, that we're looking face right there. And uh, did that for about three years, spent uh, of those three years, almost two years underneath water. Um, and I can tell you why, I mean, why I probably got out because I love being more above sea level than below sea level. Um, after uh, my time with uh, the, or after my time on the submarine, they then sent me back to the training program. And I went and was an instructor in the, in the nuclear power propulsion program, teaching people how to uh, or teaching new, uh, new recruits into the Navy how to operate a reactor uh, to go out and man the fleet. Yeah, and then after that, I decided to get out. Uh, like, uh, it seems like everybody here uh, went and got my MBA, um, went to Ohio State. From there, transitioned into my, uh, landed a job with a chemical company, BASF. Uh, they were gracious enough to pick me up and uh, yeah, started my job there. And then along the way, I started my YouTube channel to start sharing my journey and start sharing what I've learned with others. Um, yeah, so I wanted to do a quick overview. Now what we're gonna do is just go into any, uh, now I just wanna go into some lessons learned as I went through this uh, journey, if you will. And like I said, any chats, any questions, or feel free to just speak up uh, uh, if any questions. Um, so the one thing I'm finding is, so I went to school for mechanical engineering. And, uh, you know, going through that, I, you know, it was sort of ingrained, especially for the Navy, they needed engineers. And so it was really pushed upon me to, to be an engineer. But I'll be honest, I'm not really, I'm not big into the engineering. Like I love data and I love data analytics. And so I routinely get questions from people like, hey, I'm in this field, I'm in finance. Can I transition into data analytics? Hey, I'm in biology. Can I transition into data analytics? And I don't know, I, I, I mean, I'm just voicing it. Um, I don't know if people think like, there's just like a section, like a sector of just only data analytics and like, you just like work in this bubble, but it's like, it's, data analytics can be provided everywhere. I, I mean, I could apply it if I wanted to in engineering. You can apply it uh, like Abe's doing, uh, apply it in finance. You can apply it in so many different things in so many different areas. And I, I really feel like, hey, your degree doesn't make you a data nerd. It's mainly that passion uh, that you have for 
the data analytics and actually getting it. So some quick statistics here. It took me over like 9,000 hours to get my degree. And then I've used my degree a total of like zero hours. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you in this room can relate as well. Um, I, I don't think the degree at all really makes you. And it's really, I mean, I'm really big on uh, e-learning and learning from others and using those YouTubes like uh, and everything else to, to learn. But uh, I mean, I think the degree is valuable, but I think the, the importance of actually self-education, self-worth is so much more important. And one other thing on college. So when I was in college, uh, my freshman year, I actually took a course on uh, C++. And this was like my favorite course. I built this data-driven application. And it was like, compared to all my other engineering courses, I was like, this is like my favorite course and I loved it. But for some reason, I was just stuck in this thing that I had to be an engineer. And I, I, it just really got me stuck in this, uh, this one uh, path of going to be an engineer when really I had this passion. And I just want to sort of voice this for others that, hey, if you have some sort of love for a tool, such as, you know, Tableau, Excel, SQL, like Abe as well, uh, Abe talking about he didn't like, uh, didn't do as well with Python. So he shifted to another, like that is such a, that's what we should be doing. And you should be going to the tools and the skills that most uh, inspire you and want you to actually continue on. Um, so yeah, my favorite class is C++. And then programming course, I didn't take any more programming courses. And I actually went an entire 12 years uh, before even getting back into programming. And it was really a, a shame for me and to realize that, hey, we, it seems like a lot of people in this room that have that passion for data analytics that, um, that hey, go for those tools that motivate you and keep on sticking with them. And uh, just a little funny, like I love Python, um, but I'm not gonna lie, I, uh, I cannot, uh, <laughs> I, I, I know Excel and I use, I'm, I'm pretty good at VBA, but I, I'm not a fan uh, of Excel. So I don't really, if you watch my YouTube channel, I don't have much content on it. And people are always like, can you do some spreadsheet uh, videos? And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, so moving on. Uh, from college, we went and joined the Navy, went through the nuclear power propulsion program. That's me at graduation right there. And that's where I started to realize the power of self-learning and self-education. So it's great that you have this degree. And uh, I mean, I went on to get a master's after this, but the ability to... Um, to be able to learn and teach yourself things is so, is so powerful. And uh, specifically, uh, I'm sure Aaron can re relate to this, in the submarine force, and I'm sure it's in the other branches as well, knowledge is equated to power. So for us, it didn't matter how, what your, really your rank was, right? I showed up uh, as an officer. I didn't really, I mean, I, was, I didn't really get respect because I didn't have knowledge and you don't really develop that until you get the knowledge and to be able to display it. So, I mean, you could be the most powerful person on the submarine, and if you have the knowledge, even more powerful than the captain, if you can display that and showcase it with others. And I still think that that same concept of that being knowledgeable about a domain and about a topic, it can be applied for us as well in this field of data analytics. So that people can see, they can come to you for those questions and they can rely on you for your insights. So I cannot uh, overstress enough of the power of knowledge. And with that, um, a quick plug, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't have any affiliates for Notion or anything like that. Uh, Notion's a note-taking app. But I think for developing your knowledge and what I've found to continue to improve upon it, is you need to have a great system for note-taking. And I used to use uh, Microsoft OneNote. Uh, I'm not a fan of it at all. I really like Notion. It's free. Uh, you can go in and download it and, and put it on your thing. And then you can also get it on your phone as well. And it's just like revolutionized the way that I take notes. And I've been using it over the past year. And I can just go in, keep notes. And like uh, recently, I, I hadn't worked with Git in a while. Went into my notes for Notion, just typed in a search bar Git. And I popped up all the notes that I had for it. And I was able to just get back to it. And so I really like this electronic way over, uh, over physical notes of writing. But yeah, um, enough on that. Anyway. Uh, Taking notes, I feel it's important for improving the knowledge and knowledge equals power. Um, 
The other thing I found, especially for those that are uh, transitioning. So moving into my time on the submarine, like I said, I was uh, on the USS Jimmy Carter. I was in charge of an engineering division about uh, about dozen individuals in charge of the auxiliary systems. That's me up at the top right uh, driving the submarine. Not going to lie. That's the most scariest experience of my life driving this multi-billion dollar uh, um, um, submarine. And you have like 200 people's lives in your hand. And yeah, I, I had a few close calls. I almost ran into an island once. That's a topic for another discussion. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was such a great uh, experience. I got to work with all these individuals shown in the bottom left uh, with all the different officers and, uh, my, and my crew as well. And I think the, the one thing, especially for those transitioning out, I think we a lot of times like to, like we try to stress this leadership and that, uh, hey, we have leadership skills and to, um, to, to, to show this to if we're going for a job or we're going for that next promotion. And really what I think we should actually be stressing is because they know that from the military, we are, they know that we're, we have leadership, they know that. What they don't know is that you're actually, we're actually really good communicators. We're really good at talking with people, finding out what a problem is, and then finding a solution. That's why also there's a lot of, um, we're seeing a lot of vets uh, in this data analytics community. So we're trying to find solutions for things and we're looking for tools to use it. And it's, it's, it's in our bloods as veterans to, to really find these problems, communicate others, and get this. So don't, experience, uh, don't discredit the uh, experience of your soft skills and your ability to communicate. Capture that when you're trying to get that next job promotion or you're trying to get that role. Um, I feel like that is actually more powerful than saying like, hey, I was a, a leader of a dozen people of uh, the auxiliary system. I mean, but what did you do? What type of actual communications and how did you solve problems? Um, and then I, my, I have a self quote of a, a data nerd that can't communicate data insights. It's effectively ineffective. It doesn't matter if you know the best tools uh, for the job. Um, if, if you're, yes, if you're the best Tableau user, but if you can't communicate those insights or communicate those problems to your boss, uh, those that work for you, you're, you're effectively ineffective. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, and for moving on to there. So uh, once I said, like I said, I was on the USS Jimmy Carter. And then from there, I transitioned uh, over to be portion of the training unit. And it's in upstate New York. It's a nuclear training facility. And you can see from that first picture in the background, they have like this giant co uh, concrete uh, ball. It's actually the biggest freestanding concrete ball, I think in the world. Uh, and uh, there's a reactor on the inside of that, but my, the reactor that I worked on was actually right behind that. Um, but yeah, so when I went back to this unit to actually train uh, men and women to go out and man uh, the submarine fleet and also our aircraft carrier fleet, because um, they're both nuclear powered, um, I really actually found out that I, I loved and enjoyed teaching. And, but what uh, I found out more about it is that I didn't realize, especially I was on in the submarine and I was operating this reactor. And then, but when I went back to actually teach, I didn't realize how much I actually didn't know about um, nuclear power and what I thought I actually should have known while I was on the submarine. So, I mean, you can imagine like two or three years later, I'm teaching, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't know that. And like, I was entrusted with uh, running this, uh, running with this, uh, this submarine. So the point that I'm trying to make with this is that teaching is one of the highest forms of understanding. And they have this learning pyramid that I'm a fan of. And they talk about the different percentages of how you retain knowledge uh, for retention. And like, so this lecture looks like you're only going to retain about 5% of what I have to say. So if you retain anything, maybe retain this. And uh, they have different levels. It could be lecture, reading, audio, visual, but teaching others is the highest form of learning. And uh, uh, I'll get more into social media presence uh, later on in this, but overall, I highly encourage you to get into teaching what you're learning. You may think uh, that you're just starting your journey and you're like, I don't have anything to teach. I'm telling you, there's somebody else that you're just incrementally above. You can teach them, like you have value in what you can teach. It doesn't matter where you are in your training, you have some value. Um, probably even more value than somebody like me, like I'll say I'm experienced with Tableau. I'm not going to be as good at communicating the, uh, Tableau as somebody that's actually just learning it. Um, 
me think of teaching eight notes, a posted LinkedIn. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, okay, so, and then moving on. So my time in the Navy came to an end, a lot, uh, like a lot of that's here. I was like, what am I going to do? And I was talking to a fellow YouTuber, Ken G, about this recently. And I was like, what am I gonna do? I don't know. And everybody was getting uh, MBAs. And so I was just like, well, I guess, I guess I'm going to go get an MBA now uh, because everybody else is. And I don't know. I'm like, I don't want to get a job because well, I don't want to work. Uh, and uh, I was like, ah, oh, and, and luckily I, I had uh, the GI Bill that I could use as well. But the thing about the military and the thing that we have to have set up uh, for success is making sure you have a plan B. And I think that's what we're really good at uh, as veterans. And we think we need to apply this as well whenever you're going for that next job promotion or that next uh, or you're get, trying to get into some school or something, have plans and have backup plans. So just a, just my example, I was uh, all my friends, uh, they were really smart. And they had good, you have to uh, take the GMAT to get into business schools. And that's a standardized test. And I'm actually really bad at standardized tests. So I had a really poor score. Um, and also I looked at my job uh, applications after this and they weren't that great either. But anyway, so my friends were getting into Harvard and Berkeley and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going for Harvard and Berkeley. I'm going to try to get into the top schools. And during the while I was applying for them, like, okay, what, well, you know, military time, I need to have backup plans. So I started applying for other colleges as well, such as Virginia, Vanderbilt, and Duke. And during that time, lo and behold, you know, I have uh, pretty shitty scores, got rejected from Harvard and Berkeley. And so then I'm like, well, I need another plan. So then I moved into uh, the third round of, because uh, we had the first round, second round, and third round of call, uh, school applications, then moved into applying for the next tier of schools. Uh, during that time, I got rejected to all my second rounds. So then I'm like, I'm in the latch to, latch disc efforts uh, to like land a school. And it was coming up on the final round of admissions for school. And so I started to apply for the next schools. And during that time, got rejected from Texas. And then finally, thankfully, uh, Ohio State, somehow I tricked them and they let me in. So I was able to uh, uh, ban and pursue anymore. So I think the point is, right, um, have backup plans. What is your plan next? I, I routinely get questions from people like, I got rejected from 100 uh, uh, applications or um, uh, 100 different applications. Okay, I'm like, okay, well, that's looking at the past. Like, let's look forward. What are you doing next? What is your next goal that you're going to accomplish? Because that will what is what will keep you motivated in, in pursuing those job promotions and those job applications. Um, <laughs> uh, Al, uh, don't talk about it this that way. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, okay. And so, yeah, I went back to school and Ohio State, I can't say enough about Ohio State, super friendly with, uh, um, super friendly with uh, the veteran community there. So highly recommend if you're looking to get an MBA, check out Ohio State. Uh, I'm just beyond in debt to them to what they offer. Anyway, while I was there, I hadn't been programming or doing anything with data during my entire time. Like when I was in the Navy, I actually, I would get Excel spreadsheets and I'd give it to other people and be like, hey, can you analyze this data? Because I didn't know what to do with it. So when I went back to school, I specialized more in Excel because I thought I should learn about it. And it, like that C++ class 12 years prior, it really got me ignited for it. And um, one of the things that we were learning was Excel VBA, and I'm not really a fan of VBA, so I'm not going to promote it, but it got me back get fired into getting into data. And, uh, and that was the main thing, And um, which I'll touch on here in a second, but we were building, uh, I did a team project building in Excel this meal planning application. I have a passion for CrossFit and physical fitness and eating healthy, so we decided to team up and, and build this uh, Excel sheet. Um, this product that you will, that you could go in and, and plan your meals and hit your macros. And so it was a, it was pretty neat, pretty uh, ingenious. It was awesome working on a team to do this, but it really, this is what like my, like uh, the start of the fire that got me into data analytics. Um, so yeah, I think mainly, Hey, find a tool that what makes you stay up at night and playing with it. For me, I, like I said, I started with Excel and it was like, oh, I got to find something else. And, uh, I moved actually, I tried to move into Python and, and I keep on picking on Abe, but I had very similar experience to Abe with, uh, with learning Python. So I was, I decided after this course got over, I said, okay, I'm going to take this Excel um, application that we made, if we will, and I'm going to convert it into a 
Python, uh, Python application, and we're going to use this Django web framework. Do not recommend, I didn't know Python at all. I do not recommend uh, learning Python this way. It's, uh, it's completely too hard and it was completely overkill. And so that's my, one of my lessons of this is I, is I went too big. I decided I wanted to make this application and it, start small. If anything, start small and then build from there. Um, and during that time, just to show a little bit about me I, and how I got into social media, I started making an Instagram page that I was promoting the uh, promoting this application by posting like food pictures and stuff like that. And so whenever I was going to release the application that I built in Python, um, I was going to have some followers to try it out. But the main thing that I want to get out of this, this is, is use this to uh, sort of uh, encourage you to, to combine those passions. So I have a passion for that meal prep. I had a compassion for data analytics. Combine those together and you can use that to learn and understand tools. And just, just for my example though, be careful to limit your scope because like Python, I burnt out on it. And just like Abe, I ended up switching over to another tool and abandoning Python for a while. So be careful about uh, what you're doing with that. Um, yeah, okay, finally moving into the good stuff, if you will. Um, actually, I got out of school and from there, luckily got picked up by this company, BASF. And I actually, I didn't get hired as a data analyst. And I, um, I get a lot of questions around that, right? How do you transition? Uh, and I've talked about before how to transition into becoming a data analyst. But my first job, I was actually got hired into a managerial development program. And the point of the program was to get us in and actually move us into jobs where we'd either become sort of a product manager or a, a director, more of a executive level that you go into. It wasn't going to be data analyst at all. But my first job uh, that I got and landed with my boss, she gave me a project and I was in charge of managing a project, like a typical project manager will, if you will. But she also was like, hey, I have this side thing. And I saw that you're in your resume, you're interested in data. I'm trying to build this like dashboard where we can communicate some data insights to people within our department. So because I had this passion for, you know, Excel and then uh, Python, I was like, yeah, I'll take it up. And it was, it was my side project. And what happened is I ended up building this Power BI dashboard with it. So um, it was just the tool that we use at the time. I didn't, uh, I actually didn't even know Power BI at the time. So I had to learn it with this. And because I was showing so much interest in this and actually it was getting a lot of traction, a lot of people were interested in it and wanting it to get developed. My boss allowed me actually to transition my, my primary role of this project manager, that other project that I was working on, to just solely focus on this. And this became my main, uh, main goal of my job to build this application and to, and to, to build it up. So that's what I want to people to take out of this is, hey, just because your title isn't data analyst or data uh, scientist or whatever it may be, doesn't mean you can't do those things. Um, find a problem that you find interesting and solve it. I, I mean, especially in the military, we know better to ask for forgiveness than beg for permission. Uh, like, just go for it. Um, I, I, did, I did another project after this without even uh, talking to my boss about it. I didn't even get in trouble, but it, it ended up building another dashboard and then being like, hey, I also built this dashboard. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is so great. Um, and uh, yeah, just like if you're finding something interesting, go for it, build it up and then uh, and showcase it and you'll develop your skills along the way. Um, yeah, okay. And then, yeah, like I said, uh, most frequent question, uh, like I said, how do I transition that I get is how do I transition from my current job or field to become a, a data nerd, if you will? And I think the better question is how can I apply data analytics and data science in my current job or field, right? Do that first. Um, and then from there, if you want to transition to that role of data scientist, data analyst, uh, data engineer, then do that. But the data analytics can be applied in, in so many different uh, fashions. Okay, uh, last main point, uh, uh, won't bore you any further, um, but this is the main thing, going back to that, uh, you know, you're only going to retain 5% of, uh, of what's presented to you. <laughs> if you retain anything, this is what I want uh, you to get out of this, is to share your work for self-growth. And so I have a YouTube channel, 
and I go through and I've done it over the past year and I show some Tableau stuff, some uh, an analysis of different e-learning platforms, some Python, things like that. And it's been, it's been really awesome for me uh, to share this, but you're like, well, what, what do you get in return for this? And I'll tell you. So my most recent job at, uh, at BASF, I was hired as a data analyst. And I was hired as a data analyst because of my YouTube channel. And you're like, well, Luke, you have like uh, 90,000 followers. Like, no, this is back whenever like I had uh, only a few videos, had less than a thousand subscribers. And I actually didn't think much of my YouTube channel at the time. So I had it well, at the bottom of our resume. It was just like the last line on the resume. Oh, and I, uh, I, I'm having a YouTube channel on data analytical content. Anyway, so I applied for this one job for, uh, to be a data analyst. And they said that was the main thing whenever after I went through the interview and found out that I got the job was that my YouTube channel was the main reason why I ended up getting the job because they were able to go there, see that I had a passion about a topic, saw that I was knowledgeable about the topic, and they just felt that I could actually um, handle the job. And it's led to other opportunities as well. And so I'm not saying, hey, you need to go out and start a YouTube channel uh, necessarily. Uh, like it's not for everybody. I like uh, my dad's into, was into videography. I'm into that. I'm into talking and teaching with others. So there's a lot of passions that align with YouTube. But this is the one thing that I want you to take away from this is, is how you can, how you should showcase your work is pick one platform. And I have a, a, a list right here that I'll provide. Start small, uh, don't mess up like I did with the Python and try to go too big. Pick one platform, start small and stay consistent. So, I mean, it may be as simple as going onto LinkedIn and just doing daily posts, or maybe you're decide to move up and get into Tableau Public and to actually display your dashboards. Whatever it may be, just pick one tool, start small, don't overwhelm yourself and stay consistent with displaying that work uh, to others. And I guarantee you over the course of like I've been on this journey for a year, if you do these three things, you will, it will pay off for you um, in your personal life and in your job growth. And also, I mean, I just can't say enough about it, but it's also helped me with my self-learning and developing myself. And so I just really highly encourage this and I cannot uh, um, beat this point enough about of sharing your worth and showcasing it with others. Um, okay, that's enough of me rambling on. We're gonna wrap up now. So closing thoughts. Um, yeah, I don't have any closing thoughts. Uh, I have two book recommendations, if you will. Um, one, if you are a aspiring data nerd or if you're just, uh, you're looking to up your data, uh, how you showcase data, highly recommend Storytelling with Data. Storytelling with Data is a book uh, by uh, Cole, and it's, I mean, it's a very easy read. Um, so check it out on Amazon. And this is actually, I used a lot of these things. Uh, this book alone tells you how to go through and better show your visualizations, but also how to communicate insights uh, as whatever your job is to others. So that way they can actually latch onto it. So this is, I've used a lot of these concepts also uh, from this book in my personal YouTube and then also in my job when presenting. So I highly recommend that. The next book, Show Your Work, is a very short, easy read. You can read it in a, a night and it's, uh, it's like 100 pages long. It's got a lot of pictures, so I like that. And it uh, goes into why you should show your work and some reasonings behind it and how you should go about showcasing it. So those are the two book recommendations that I'm going to, uh, to drop with you that I highly recommend. Aspiring data nerds go with the uh, storytelling with data and then aspiring content creators go with that show your work. Um, thanks, Ethan. Yeah, uh, for that. Um, bam. Okay, that was it. I think I'm on time for the uh, 30 minutes time. Uh, I guess, are we opening up to questions now? Or I don't know, uh, transition to the next? <laughs> yeah, does anyone have uh, any questions for Luke? Hey, Luke, I'm, uh, I'm constantly looking to learn and uh, but I can't seem to find time in the day and I always try to ask people like what when do you because I have you know, a full-time job I have two kids um, you know household chores and stuff How, where do you fit in like the self-learning 
basically because I'm having a hard time hard time doing that. Yeah. Um, no, that's a that's a great question. You know, so I used to when I had a lot of free time, I would just go and take these e-learning, uh, go online mm-hmm. and take these uh, like data camp courses or Coursera. And you you know you get a real time job, and then it's like I don't have I don't have time for that anymore. What I find is I I pick some project that is just out of my reach. So like right now I'm working on this uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, I'm doing some job uh, data scraping with uh, Python and then I'm gonna do this analysis. And I'm gonna be, my goal is to use tools that I don't necessarily know about. And because I have this goal and because I've also put it out to my YouTube channel to say that, hey, I'm gonna do this, it holds me accountable that I need to learn these tools in order to actually showcase it to my subscribers. so yeah, so I guess it, it's sort of a two thing approach. It's one, I use a project to motivate me to actually learn those tools, but two, I promote it out there. So that way I have accountability from those around me that they are expecting me to learn it and then showcase my learnings with them. Cool. Yeah, and actually now I just thought of it like um, a couple of years ago, I went through um, one of um, Playfair Data's books um, What's the first one, Ethan? Help me out. Practical Tableau, man. Practical Tableau. Sorry. Uh-huh. I mean, there's other books. But like, so what I, I challenged myself to do each exercise in it, and I posted it on Twitter um, every time I did it. And um, mm-hmm. that actually, that I, I tagged uh, Ryan Sleeper, who is the author of it, and every time. And I said, hey, I'm going to finish this before the next Tableau conference. And I did it, but that also got me visibility. Ryan reached out to me and then Ethan found out about this, um, about me and the tug and, and me trying to, um, to start this tug. And actually right. ever since I met Ethan, the, the, the tug just skyrocketed from there. And uh-huh. um, so, yeah, just the consistent, I try to do it every night, the consistency of just putting onto Twitter and, and tagging people and stuff. And, uh, and here we are now. Look at that. So it, it seems like you're, you're using a very similar system and mm-hmm. you, you have that accountability to, to yeah, maintain it. Exactly. Yep. Mm. I got a question, was, Luke. Uh, Good. Um, so like with learning all this stuff, I know like me, like um, I'm sure all of us as veterans, like, you know, when we like something and we want to learn something, we're like all in. So how do you yes. balance like learning something new and then all the other stuff you have to do in life and like fighting burnout? Because I know like for me, like, um, you know, I, I like push myself, push myself, and then I just like don't learn anything or don't retain. So how do you like, you know, balance learning new stuff and then just like life in general? Yeah, um, I don't. I don't do it well. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm human just like you. Oh, my gosh. I like, uh, yeah. Um, recently, I was learning a new tool, uh, Airflow, which is used to manage uh, different uh, jobs and uh, be able to use Python to manage different jobs for data pipelines. And man, it's, it's similar to what you're talking about. It's just you, you run into that burnout and it's uh, it's, it's a hard thing. It, uh, mainly, I want to just get out that that's normal, right? But what you do to pick up and get going after that, that's what I think that's especially strong for veterans is we're really good at that into applying that military training that we had that, hey, we're having this burnout. This is what we need to do it. And so, I, don't, I mean, as far as solutions, I don't have, uh, my, they're not that great. Um, my solutions are just take a break from it and get back to it. I think the more important thing is that everybody has these things. Everybody burns out. Everybody gets tired. When you do take a break from it and then get back into it because you're not alone like this. It's completely normal to be like, I'm done with Python. I'm moving to R, but don't do that. Don't be an owl. Stick with the Python. Okay. (laughs) Damn, man. Great advice. <laughs> I'm yeah, actually going to have anything to do with R. That's a joke about uh, that's a joke about R. I love I love R just as much. <laughs> yeah, so Luke, hi, uh, Scott Forbes. I, my question is, is loosely related to Tim's uh, time. Time is the, the hardest thing I've got. So I realize in the mornings when I run, like that's a time when um, I could multitask and listen to something. I can't do a YouTube channel because I trip over myself. So do you know of any podcasts audibles that would help get us on further along on our journey without having to read or see the visuals associated oh my goodness um i'm not uh i'm not at too as much up to date on the uh um 
as up to date on the, the, the podcast as well. I do is probably similar to you and go and type data on it. I, I will say uh, that uh, the one podcast that I do listen to quite frequently to see what's going on in the field is uh, Ken G is a YouTuber, has a, a podcast on, uh, on, he interviews different people within data science and data analytics. And mm-hmm. that is a podcast that like I, I push all the time and I'm listening, he comes out with weekly content where he interviews somebody and you get to hear about their job and about what tools they're using. So okay. that is the one podcast I'll remember uh, or that I'll push out and, uh, and, and, and uh, recommend for this. So um, I'm sorry. Oh. So Storytelling with Data actually has a, a podcast as well. And, I think I've um, listened to it, that it, one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's still going. I used to um, listen to it religiously um, and they also have a great blog too. Uh, I know, I know you can't do that while you're running, but, um, you can get data, <laughs> yeah. uh, weekly emails and she has challenges and things like that. And I mm-hmm. uh, actually just use something and, uh, that, um, they went over. So, but yeah, um, her blog is really good too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the other one is, uh, Ken's nearest neighbor. I'll, I'll just put that in the chat, uh, because, uh, Kenji has his YouTube channel, but then he also has Ken's nearest neighbor, which also goes into podcast format. Oh, and I just realized I'm uh, still sharing my screen. Perfect. Well, uh, those were all great questions. And thanks again, Luke. Um, that was great content for sure. A lot of good advice there uh, for the whole crowd. Um, but let's go ahead and introduce our second speaker, Yamil. Uh, so Yamil has over 20 years of experience um, in data analytics. And as you heard from him earlier in the Vet Viz section of the event, uh, he's been co-leading the Tableau user group over in Orlando for eight years now, a uh, Tableau ambassador, but he's also a host uh, to a show three at three. Uh, so Yamil, do you want to uh, start sharing your screen and take us through? Yamil, it looks like you're muted if you're talking. Yes, hold on a second, I'm gonna share in. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Yep. So just first, thank you for inviting me here. I'm just being an honor to, to be here. And many of the things that Duke said, you know, I feel very related to, I mean, especially, you know, about like, how can you grow uh, your career through sharing, right? And collaboration, especially collaboration. I think that will help me a lot through all these years to collaborate, to help others in the community. And it really, really will help you. I mean, I think that, you know, Everything that I have learned through all these years, the job that I have right now is being because of that, because of being out there in the community, helping. And it doesn't have to be Tableau. You know, I always tell people, it doesn't matter what tool you're using, if it's Power BI or Tableau or Cognos, it doesn't matter. I mean, there is so many different tools. I mean, and there's so many communities. I mean, I, I love Tableau community. I'm a Tableau ambassador, but to be honest with you, you can do this with any tool, right? And if you're out there sharing and helping others and collaborating, I mean, you can do so much. I mean, and like Luke said, in one year, you're not going to be believe what is going to happen to your career. Um, and that's what I, I'm here to, for two things. You know, I want to inspire you to do many of these things, but also to help to invite you to something that we're doing. Uh, it's been very successful, especially um, I couldn't believe, you know, we opened uh, one week for the military. Uh, we wanted to do a military session or a military week. And Abe, he, he signed up and two other uh, veterans signed up really quick. And we were like, wow, this is amazing. Let's open another week. And we wanted to invite you to, to be part of the show. So to give you a little bit about what, why did I build or created this show, right? So let me give you an idea. And I think everybody that's here in this um, as meeting is going to relate to that. So the, it was inspired actually by the community. So to give you an idea here, this is Christopher, he's a friend of mine. And you've probably seen people on LinkedIn, maybe Luke have done this. You know, people put a, 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 play, a post with a chart out there, right? And the community, look, let's look down here. The community start talking about this. So look at how people are talking and talking and talking and talking, right? 
So when I was looking at this for many years, we all, all of us do this, right? When I, I used to work for Universal Studios in Orlando and we were part of like, let's say 10 or 15 BI developers. We were there in the office and we were doing this, but in a different way, right? We were like, hey, look, I found this on Tableau Public. And do you like this? Hey, look, Ryan Sleeper, he posted this new chat or right? something. What, you, what about this? Let's use this on our visualization here in Universal. Or you saw something that from a magazine, and for example, this one specifically is from New York Times or Wall Street Journal, I'm sorry. And you're like, man, I don't really like this color. I don't really like this. You know, people were talking about this all the time. If you're a data visualization developer, somebody that is doing this, this is something that I, I even have uh, uh, sent a text message to some of my friends and say, hey, look what this guy did. This is crazy. And people were talking about this all the time. So my thought was, why we don't do this as a show live? That's the show about, okay? So let me tell you what it is. When you go to a meeting and you're somebody that is creating dashboards or reports, it doesn't matter. You will go there and you will show this for the first time to these people live, right? So for them, it's a mystery. You have never showed them this for them before. So that's what we do in the show. Let me tell you what, 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 what I mean with that. So the show... In the show, what we do is called three at three for this reason, because it's three people at 3 p.m. Wednesdays is the third week, day of the, of the week. And, what we, and we have three questions. So to make it very easy to, to remember, the idea is for every single of the people that are, that are participating, they're going to bring a chart or a visualization. It can be for any source. It doesn't have to be Tableau. And they're going to present this for the first time, but it's going to be a surprise. The other people in the show and the people in the chat have never seen this visualization before. The reason because we do that is because we want to recreate that first impression, right? Because the first question is, what do you think about this visualization? What is your first impression? The second thing that we do is we ask them, hey, is there anything that you understand or you don't understand? Anything that is confusing? And the third question is, what can we do to make it better? Right. We have been very successful so far. Um, I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of how, what, what the things that we have done. Um, this show has been so successful that in less than two months, they, they contacted me from Latin America, from Colombia and Venezuela. They want to do the same show in Spanish now. And there is another uh, user group, uh, very, a bit, it's a large user group uh, for Latin America. They have like almost 4,000 uh, users, I'm sorry, members. And they want to recreate the show in Spanish too. And we were also mentioned in the and Tableau. There's also in Tableau this I'm gonna wanted to share really quick. Uh, in uh, it's called Data Fan Roundup. So every week Tableau select all the best content for the week, and we were selected twice already. And you can see the show is right here below here, uh, and we selected twice. Uh, and and it, this happened really, really fast. So the reason why I'm here, because and in addition to inspire you, I want to invite all of you to be part of the show. So here we have a sign up sheet. Uh, if you can see it's being, it's filling out really fast and you can be part of this. That's the cool thing about the show too, right? We're not looking here to have a, a SEM master or like an expert. We want individuals like you because that's what we want. We want to know what is your perspective? Normal individuals, normal people, what do you think about a shark? A visualization because the idea of the show is to first we want to learn how to collaborate better but we also want to understand how other individuals look at data visualization right and normal people not like somebody that uh, have four five books and is a sand master somebody that's an expert i learning more from individuals that are individuals like us and we have a show uh, i wanted to invite you to the show november 10 is the military so these are going to be data visualization specifically to military uh, data visualization of data, right? So how we do this, we go on the wild, we go to we Google, just data visualization, military, and things like that. Whatever you can find there, that's what individuals uh, that are gonna be in the panelists are gonna, are gonna bring. And Abe is, is, is gonna be there, so please uh, support him. He's gonna be there on, on November uh, 10. And also we have another one on December 8th. We already have someone, Emily, Clint, she's going to be with us and it, it, there's two more spots and we're trying to do this you know depends on the week what's going what's happening on the week holidays we have hr we have travel 
Um, this last week, uh, I'm sorry, this week, this Wednesday, we have a tacos. That's when I'm sure that I'm having, I'm, oh, I'm, let me share my, my video, I'm sorry. Uh, so we had this uh, taco, it was about taco data visualizations and it was a lot of fun, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, it was crazy. I mean, everybody was eating tacos while we were doing this. And the reason why we do that is because, you know, when, when, I, when I was looking about what can I do for the community, what, else, what can I bring something new? I did a lot of research and I noticed that if you think about it, everything that you see posted is about how to do something. Like for example, how can I create this in Tableau? How can I create this in, how can I do this in Python or R or whatever? What I wanted to bring two things. I want to entertain and make it fun, but also I want to do something different. I want to learn about how to collaborate better. So this show is about collaboration, about how can you talk with other people like do the same things that you're doing. And also we want to learn how we can, you know, like take something that you build and then re, like redo it again and make it better and better and better. And sometimes, you know, when, when we're creating a dashboard or something, what I learned is like, Sometimes you don't have any more ideas or you're, you're just stuck. You're like, ah, this is perfect. Everybody will understand it. But that's not true. When you when you show it to some other people, they will be like, mm, I don't really understand that. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? So why is that? Why, why is they don't understand it? And that's what is the show all about. And it's it's really a lot of fun. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I never thought that it would be success, this successful or have so much fun. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. And I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, like how many, I mean, People send me about themes almost every day. Hey, can you do beer? Can you do this? Can you, they want pizza. They want, I mean, you name it. Uh, and it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun uh, to do this. Uh, oh, the other thing that I wanted to show you some of the videos that we already have. So we did music, visualization, cryptocurrency. This is already completed. Uh, the, the shows that we have done, healthcare data. The woman in data was amazing. This lady is, they blown away. Uh, we had to do two because they were so good. And uh, we have labor when, when it was Labor Day. Uh, it's it's really, really interesting. And, you know, we're going to continue to do this, doing this every week. It's, a, it's Wednesday. It's at 3 p.m. Eastern. And if anybody wants to participate, just more than welcome. Um, and I'm, I'm promise you, you're going to learn a lot. And you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun. And... Let me see if I wanted to show something really fast. Um, just to give you an idea, um, it, it's it's very cool that, uh, so to give you an idea, people surprise us a lot of, all, all the time, right? They, there was this lady who she was uh, an economist and she brought in uh, some visualizations that the US census actually are publishing. And what we didn't know is that there were three of them. So she brought in, one for each year and you could see how the u.s census learned how to do it better and better and better so it was a lot it was very very a lot a lot of fun and also another thing about the show is in the chat everybody is also answering those questions also providing their their knowledge or whatever they think about these visualizations and then we bring in those visualizations those comments like you can see this one in, in the bottom here to here for the conversation to the discussion too and yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it is. I just wanted to invite you, all of you um, to participate. I mean, it's, it's been a lot of fun, like I said, um, so far. And, you know, I, I just wanted to invite everyone here. I mean, I think that you guys I can bring very good, um, you know, perspective of data visualizations too. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that, Emil. And, and just to tie both presentations together, you know, this is a great way to get into the industry or to start building your, your public profile. Um, this is a great way to do that. Uh, it's just so fantastic to see this in the community. And it's so pretty cool. Look, look, this is the one that we did on Wednesday and someone brought in this visualization. I'm like, where do you found this? I mean, I was like, this is incredible. And of course, <laughs> I wanted to tell you something. This is not about, we, we don't care about bringing in perfect visualization. That's not the show we're all about, right? It's, it could be ugly, it could be perfect, it could be good. It doesn't matter because the idea is to discuss this visualization they're looking at. Hey, what do you like? What do you don't like? Do you understand? How can you make it better? I mean, I was blown away at what the people were talking about. And also in the chat about this specific visualization. I mean, and everybody was uh, bringing in, I mean, different ones. It, it, was, it was amazing. And, and this is the people from the chat 
and we have a lot of fun. Just look at this. Uh, this is Joe. I mean, Joe kind of like he's also a YouTuber. He has like thirty thousand, uh, uh, I think, viewers. I'm sorry, um, followers. He's also the CEO of Biz Lab, and he was in the show, blown away, making fun and having fun with this. I mean, it's a, uh, it's it's a lot. I mean, you can learn. I think you, and this is another visualization because it was about. Uh, the reason why we did this this week because it was a national taco day on Monday, and in, in, that's what they brought in. Okay, let's, let's bring in avocados, and people were talking about this, and and it's just the people from the chat. You know, Andrew came. Look, that's somebody from the chat, and you 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 will find the most incredible comments and and for individuals. And we we discussed this chart too, and it's like you said, like you see, it's not a specifically. Uh, Tableau is a real tool agnostic and it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's great. Yeah, thank you. Thanks again. And I can't wait to see Abe. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> um, I'll be at that event for sure. I hope you guys will as well. Um, does anyone have any questions for Yamil? Any questions? Um, I think I'm going to try to see if I can put the sign up sheet in the chat. Uh, I dropped your channel, your LinkedIn, and, and the sign-up sheet uh, okay, in perfect. the chat a couple of minutes ago for you. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Well, this is kind of uh, something that we do for our speakers at every event. Um, it's something very special to us, and to show appreciation, uh, we want to end or we want to give both of you um, a coin. Uh, this is a coin that we had put in production when we first started the, the Tableau User Group, um, and we give it to all of our speakers again just to show appreciation. I know you know everyone's time. It's a hot commodity these days. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys giving us the time, giving our, our community the time. Um, so to show our appreciation, we're gonna present both of you with a coin. Um, after this presentation, I'll probably reach out just to get a mailing address for you guys. I wish we could do it in person and maybe one point we can. Um, but for now, I'll just mail these out to you. And, and again, thank you so much uh, for everything you guys do for the community. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Anytime. Thank Anytime. you all for having us. This has been uh, this has been awesome sharing this, and I appreciate it. I'm looking forward yeah. to this coin. It's my favorite coin. Yeah. It's a good one for sure. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, we do post a job board, um, so I went out there and I kind of found some pretty cool opportunities. Um, I'll go through some of these, um, and then I'll have uh, some of the the audience out there has also invested in this. So I may have Yumil speak, um, and if we have Lynn, I'll have him uh, speak as well. Uh, so starting with the Playfair data, we have two openings right now for a senior data an engineer and a senior Tableau engineer. Uh, one would be more in the wheelhouse of using all tricks and stuff like that to data engineer and get stuff um, built out in structured formats so we can ingest it into our tools. And the other would be primarily dashboard engineering um, with Tableau development. I also found these on USA Jobs. I was just perusing there and I brought in a few that I thought were kind of interesting. One is a financial resource analyst um, for the Homeland or Department of Homeland Security. Uh, the other is a program analyst position of the Veterans Affair, the VA. And the last is a data analyst position for the Department of Health and Human Services. All of these uh, were remote positions um, or at least they had uh, flexible location options available. Uh, so I thought those were pretty cool. I brought those out. Um, from data meaning, and Yamil, maybe you want to jump in and speak to this a little better or introduce these okay. uh, jobs. Yes. So in data meaning, I work with data meaning. We're based in uh, here in South Florida. Uh, and we're always looking, actually. You guys always should check our um, job here, length channel here in the data meaning applied job.com apply right now we're looking for a solutions architect business intelligence 
Um, we're one of the largest uh, top Altrix partners in the US. And we're always looking for uh, talent that knows Altrix. So if you know Altrix, hey, we we're, we're probably want to talk to you. Um, and also we have some Tableau, Tableau developers and we're also looking for trainers. And all of these jobs are remote. Uh, we don't we don't care where you live here in the U.S. We, we can apply, and and we have very good pay, and it's a great exciting company. And we're always uh, you know looking for individuals that that are passionate. You know, like uh, we we love passionate uh, individuals, and also uh, like you see, uh, we we also do a lot of content, and it's fun to work here. And if you if you're interested, just more than happy apply and let me know. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Um, the next one is our friends over at DataBrains. Uh, let me switch to that. Uh, they have quite a few different positions open. Um, and I don't know if we have, uh, do we have Lynn in the audience? It's, it's Scott that uh, can speak up. Oh, Scott, yeah. sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, do we no have problem. Scott out there? Uh, Scott's out here. Um, yeah, we've got some open positions. Uh, the information technology support technician is basically an infrastructure type person. Uh, responsible for like building new servers and patching servers, upgrading servers, that kind of thing. Um, then we've got the Tableau consultant developers levels one and three, which is, you know, creating the visualizations and doing that kind of thing. And then the senior Tableau consultant or developer, it says level one, but technically it's a level four. Um, it's level one of the seniors. And there's three levels for senior, three levels for regular Tableau consultant. And then we've got sales positions, but by the sound of things, I don't know if anybody in this in this audience is really interested in that side of things. And that's pretty much it. Visit us at uh, www.databrains.com. Uh, should have three W's on there. That was, you know, brain going faster than the fingers kind of thing. So perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank uh, you. To close, uh, we do have uh, Scott's. Um, Scott's kind of, uh, this is their contact information. Sorry about that. It's a distracted <laughs> oh, no for a problem. moment. <laughs> no problem. I was like, is my screen still sharing? Uh, this is their contact information. So if you guys do have any more questions, definitely feel free to reach out to Scott um, or Lynn or Lee here. And let me correct, I uh, just noticed that he did my uh, email address wrong. There's two S's. One for Scott and one for Starkey at databrains.com. Perfect. That's great. Uh, can someone post that in the chat as well? That'd be awesome. Um, Abe or Tim. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, that's going to be our job board. We, we plan on having these in all of our future events as well. So it's, it's if you guys have any opportunities um, where you guys work and want to share, definitely reach out um, and we'll get those slides included here. Uh, now to jump to, we have some, some future events that are coming up that we wanted to share. We're really excited about one being uh, we're going to be talking to Project Echelon. And right now we're working with uh, one of their professional athletes, Eric Hill, uh, to come and speak to the group. We've kind of penciled in November 2nd, uh, but as that date gets closer, uh, we may need to adjust. So just be a little flexible with us there. Um, but that will be hopefully November 2nd at noon to 1.30 uh, p.m. Eastern. The other event we have coming up is right around the corner. It's actually next week. Um, it's gonna be with the North, uh, the North Virginian Tableau user group, but I will be presenting some content to that group. I'd love if you guys could come and support me. Um, it's gonna be good content. It's uh, called the six components of layered graphics. Um, it's gonna be really interesting. So look forward to seeing you guys there. And last but not least, that's it. Uh, so we'll open this up to kind of an open discussion. Um, if anyone wants to stay on and network um, with any of our other guests, definitely feel free. Uh, but that's it. Uh, here's our contact information as well. I know I mentioned this earlier when I introduced the leadership team, uh, but here is our LinkedIn and our Twitter handles. Uh, so you guys can follow us there or add us as connections or reach out if you guys need help or any kind of questions about the group. Thank you guys so much for attending and I'll open it up to the audience. Oh, Ethan, okay. while we're waiting for, oh, sorry. Um, no while, while, 
while we're waiting, I, I just want to do um, a little bit more detail about the Project Echelon. So it's a, it's a nonprofit group. Um, what they do is they help veterans um, with uh, primarily uh, mental uh, disabilities and uh, try to cope with their mental disabilities through athletics, mostly cycling. And they are a um, professional and they race professionally. They're professional elite um, uh, domestic um, uh, um, set of the team of, of cyclists, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so he's going to present and then well, um, another part of this user group is that what we want to do, we want to do uh, challenges where they nonprofits give us data, and then we make a dashboard out of that. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of like an offshoot of, of this tug, um, you can participate, you don't have to participate. But if you want to participate, we'll, we'll um, announce that challenge and, and have a data set and everyone can, can try to do it. And then we can discuss the best way to do it and then present it to um, Project Echelon and they can pick which one they want, basically to, to um, spread awareness of, of their mission and the veteran problems. So that's a little more context behind that. Um, but yeah, that's it. Just had a quick question for a, a new guy getting into the, the data field after doing 20 years in the Navy, uh, dealing with uh, Excel mostly. Um, at what point do we do a tableau public and start pushing out our work? Because right now I'm super junior and my visualizations suck, um, but I'm looking for feedback, um, kind of trying to figure out what kind of the new hotness is and just like, at what point do we just push it? Um, right now. Yeah, right pushing. now. Yeah, right now. No, yeah, right okay. now. Just do it. Yeah, send it. Um, yeah if you uh, look at any of, even going to like the Tableau Zen Masters, uh, you can go to their Tableau portfolios. And if you scroll down, long, long ways down to the very beginning, um, you can see when they were getting started. And one good thing about that is not only can you, you're kind of recording your own progress as you're moving on, um, but it's definitely, it's good to get that stuff out there and into the community. Like Emil was saying, and like Luke said, I mean, it's a great opportunity for the community to support you in that effort and give you feedback and things like that. It's just going to help you grow for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, Thanks. yeah, so I would, so kind of like what I do, it's like I post like screenshots of my dashboards on LinkedIn and then I put the like Tableau Public, for example, I put that in the comments so more people can see it. Because if you put a link in a post and Tableau will, you know, kind of banish it. And then, so that's like, so you get like double action. You get, you get connections, your, your connections will go up, your, and then, then you'll get more followers on Tableau Public. So that's just kind of like what I do. And, yeah. I've, and, and that's pretty much like helped me out a lot with like connections and, and you know, putting myself out there. And awesome. I, don't, I don't know if, I don't know if you were, um, in the meeting when I discussed the the Twitter thing with the um, practical tableau book. I mean, honestly, and here's a, I'm gonna blow everyone's mind here. I, I'm not that good at tableau. Like I, I, I like veterans, I love data. I have this dream of becoming um, a, a better analyst and everything. So I just want, I got everyone together to, to do this. And if you look at mine, it's, it's the practical tableau exercises sort of like how to build a bar chart and how to build a line graph and things like that. So it's, and, but I, I would still tweet it out and people would see it. And then I have like, um, you know, uh, thousands of views and stuff like that, but no, no one judges you. This, this community is really great. So just yeah, put it my out there. Yeah. My first viz was some garbage tree Mac that I made on uh, <laughs> Excel and, and it was actually, and I got like, you know, pretty positive feedback on it. Uh, but now I don't do that. I just post in other tools and stuff. So. Cool. Got it. And I have one more question since everybody's on and you guys are all pros or aspiring to be pros. Um, <laughs> political so uh, just real quick like so when i'm posting just random data um polarizing political data is often um one of those things nobody wants to post what do you guys think on tableau public just putting that out i'm, I'm not biased opinion aside like uh, you know as long as it's not biased you guys think i should just stray free of political data or anything that's polarizing to that effect like for instance energy gas power stuff like that I personally would say no. I would say do a viz on whatever interests you. Um, I, I wouldn't stay away from a, a specific topic just because you think it, it might be offensive to somebody else. Uh, I mean, that would be my personal, that's how I would put it. 
Cool. And, and, and right now, every, everything seems political. So like yeah. if, you, if you wanna do climate change, if you wanna do um, uh, the effects of oil on our, on our climate or this and that, I'd, I'd just say go for it, but just kind of do objectively as, as, as possible. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't, definitely. don't, don't, don't rant about like in the things of the radical left or the radical right or, or this <laughs> yeah, or that. Yeah. I, I would just say, I would just say very objectively, this is the trend in the data. And this is where I got it from and quote your source too. Yeah, so they're right. not, so you're not getting it off of, of like a meme of Facebook or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's don't forget Facebook. about the radical middle. Oh, the radical middle. <laughs> the radical middle too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Radical everything. Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah of course. Sure. Anyone else? We have a couple minutes left. All right. Well, um, you know, uh, I think this is a this is our best turnout yet. I think friends are telling friends, but. All the new people here, please tell everyone else how how great and fun we are, and um, I know what a great group this is. Uh, I might be a little biased, but um, <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, this has been really good, and I thank Luke and and Yamil for for coming, and uh, we we couldn't do this without speakers like you, um, Ethan. I, I know you're the you're the main host here, so I'm stealing your thunder. All good, so. man. <laughs> no, we definitely, just to reiterate what Tim said, we appreciate the support and we look forward to seeing all you guys and your friends at future events. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it, everyone. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, See guys. Ya. Have a great one. All right.